Hey everybody, uh, Asian Bass Guy here. Today's video, I'm going to talk about something that has, doesn't really have to do with fishing, but uh, it's uh, getting yourself to the lake. Um, I've been uh, dealing with these breaks for uh, a long time, um, trying to figure out exactly, because when, you, when I bought this boat, it didn't really come with a lot of information. So uh, I'm going to talk about breaks and whatnot. You know, if you can't get to the lake or you have issues uh, on the way to the lake, then uh, um, you can't fish, and no matter what technique you use, you're never, you, you know, you're not going to win or uh, catch fish. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about uh, how to uh, all the parts that you'll need. I'll put them in the description box below. But um, and that that goes for the uh, the brake the brake pads and, and uh, discs and uh, all the little accessories that go with it, and um, and uh, and so I'll show you how to change it out. Uh, repack new bearings and uh, and get you back on the road safely so that uh, you can you know go off fishing. So um, well, let me show you what I uh, so what I got first. All right, uh, before you uh, take the wheels off, start when you're jacking your boat up. Make sure you don't uh, jack in front of the wheels. Uh, you want to jack behind the wheels or behind the wheel, at the wheel or behind it. Um, because what will end up happening is if you're front heavy, even if uh, you jack at the, uh, um, yeah, if you're front heavy, you're, you're, fr oh, you're back heavy and your front is up, you're actually going to tip it Another thing too is uh, my boat, when it's on my truck, it sits real level. And as I was jack, uh, jacking the back end of it up, it was pushing on the actuator, which actuates the brakes, the calipers, squeeze the calipers together, and then I couldn't turn the wheel, I can't turn the calipers. Uh, or I couldn't turn the disc and so uh, um, it's hard to take everything off so what I would suggest is either if you don't have it hooked up to your truck if you have it hooked up to your truck unhook it and with the uh, tongue jack jack it up uh, jack it up off the ball and, and release the uh, actuator um, so you can get to the uh, so you can spin the wheel and whatnot and and get the caliper off and then when you go to push the caliper in to put the pads back on it'll, it'll be a lot easier but uh, but yeah, let's get started. All right, uh, here's how I'm going to show you something um, to see if maybe you need uh, new bearings. Um, this one here is the front of my axle, and can't really hear it, but you can hear it. That means your bearings are a little, my bearings on this one are a little loose. Either the nut's loose or I need new bearings. Um, sound good, but uh, just that little bit of a play like that, that's no good. That's, uh, that's when you know if you need new bearings. Because what will end up happening is that little bit of movement will start doing this and then as it gets worse, it triples, quadruples, and then it's just that the you know tires fly right off. So that's how you can tell if uh, you need new bearings. All right, um, I got my trailer. It's got a uh, tandem axle trailer. So this one's breaking, and this one's just got a hub, just bearings in it. Um, the reason why I I start ch uh, checking these brakes uh, when I did is um, well, I wanted to, uh, when I bought the boat, I always do uh, check the bearings, replace new bearings. Uh, just let you know that um, you've got new bearings and um, I know a lot of people take this stuff in and get it done because it seems more complicated than it actually is but uh, it's really not that hard you know take a good day and uh, you can knock this out and uh, save you a lot of money um, but first what you'll you'll hear is uh, you'll hear this I don't know if you can hear that but uh, and also if you hear that you know what that is the calipers moving up uh, I didn't think it was a big deal until uh, until the uh, until until I, I'll, I'll show you I'll show you what uh, what happened but I didn't think it was a big deal for me but it was a big deal because um, that's why I'm now trying to get everything uh, done and complete and and so uh, I'll show you what's going on
And also you can see here, um, right here I have a, just a regular bearing body, which really doesn't work for these kind of wheels. Uh, you actually need one that has the, uh, the cap, um, and I'll show you when I go to put these back on, but um, this was the old disc, and I had, and in my, in my old one, I used the old one, I said, oh, I'll just put the old one back on. Well, it blew off, so I had to go out and spend $25 to buy these, uh, not the right ones, because in my, in my town I don't have them, but they had these, so I just put these in there just for emergencies. And so, so now I have a couple of pair of these uh, emergency uh, bearing buddies. But, um, but what's going on is, uh, is your caliper right here. I don't, have the, I don't have the clip that's holding the caliper or the clip that goes on the back strap to hold this caliper in place. And essentially what happens is this thing rattles and it'll sit there and when you're hitting bumps, it rattles and it actually will break the pad. So uh, I'll, show you, uh, I'll show you what a broken pad looks like. Okay, uh, so what we got here now is uh, put your hub, you got your uh, caliper here, and um, um, here's the, uh, here's the uh, clip that's supposed to hold the caliper in place on top, and uh, the one down here on the bottom, this one's not even, I mean, it's, it's non-existent, it just snapped clean off. This one here is bent, uh, bent all up, and, uh, and there's supposed to be a back strap that goes from here down to that one so it holds everything in there tight and doesn't rattle around. Um, so, uh, so what I did is I got in here, this is a, uh, a mine, it's a half inch, half inch uh, socket and on the back there's one bolt and the reason you know uh, most some cars have uh, two bolts, some have one but they sit a little bit higher and they don't sit there and rattle. Um, but uh, this one, you know this one here, I don't know, I mean it's not a bad design but if you don't have all the parts in place, you will uh, you'll see what you'll see what it does. And this is what happened to my other side. That's why I started even doing break, uh, started even checking these. But pretty much take that bolt out and you just slide that out and you can set it down. Um, here's the front pad, which you know this this was I put this on. Shoot, not even a couple months. Uh, it was probably like three or four months ago. I think I did it beginning of this year and it's anyways before the season started and that's the front pad but if you look at the rear pad it's uh it broke this top piece off and um, I mean it's just it's just gone and uh, uh, the, on the other side what happened is the whole thing broke and this metal the the metal on metal was wearing and these these uh, rotors are um, I don't know, 56, 46 dollars, something like that. I, I got the prices on the bottom, but it uh, it wore that rotor all the way out. I mean, beyond beyond repair because I was coming home from uh, from fishing. Um, you could probably, if if that were to happen, you could probably disengage the brakes. But if you don't have a large truck, then uh, it's really gonna, you know, it's really gonna push on you, and it's gonna be uh, harder on your vehicle to tow and and whatnot. So, but. I mean, uh, if you got a little bit of scouring, you may, you may be able to return them and, and get them redone, but uh, mine were so bad that I had to put a new, a whole new disc on. And so, but um, um, let's take this disc off and we'll show you, uh, we'll show you how to uh, put new, uh, new races, new uh, pack bearings, put new bearings in and a, and a new seal and uh, mount everything back on. All right, as you can pretty much see here, uh, we got to take this off, this bearing buddy. Um, there's two different ways you can do it. If you have a, a dead blow hammer, non-metallic, you don't want to start banging with this unless you're going to replace that, um, which I suggest you replace this with a new one because uh, what will happen is is you'll have to replace it anyways down the road and then you'll just have your bearings. You can do it open. with this hammer and just beat on it or you can do it with a piece of wood, which most people do. You just get on there like this. And you hit it, and what you want to try to do is try to hit it at an angle, and try to just work it. I'm going to do it with the, I mean that's how you do it with the wood, but I'll show you with this hammer. It's a little easier. So you pretty much spin it, and when you hit it, you kind of come this way, and it just comes out. All right, now 
you kind of clean this up a little bit. To uh, see your stuff here, you got a uh, cotter pin. Um, this pin, if it looks like it's old, and maybe uh, it's, it's been used a couple times, um, you may want to replace it. I may want to replace this one because I've had these off a couple times now. So, so you pretty much just pull that out. All right, and then you're gonna have a uh, a lock ring here for your cotter pin to go through that holds onto the nut. And uh, the nut should be pretty loose. Yeah, you may you may need a crescent, but mine mine was loose enough to where you know it does that thing does not be tight. And you just unscrew that off, pretty much. That pretty much grab it and just yank it all out. Just comes right off. Um, big thing is. Is on that on, on this on this bearing there's gonna be a washer you can see this washer uh, if this is the first time you're doing it don't throw this washer away if you throw this washer away what will happen is that nut will try to seat right there and and it's not gonna seat right and what's gonna happen is you're you're gonna think your bearing is is uh, your, your, your wheel is gonna wiggle and uh, you're gonna think your bearings are, you know, already done um, and, and broke. But see, when you have this washer on there, it fits, if it's flash, uh, fits flat, flush to flush, and then with the, with the nut pushing on it, then it then it gets a good solid. Uh, it shouldn't have any axial play. It should, you know, it should be uh, it should be on there solid. And so you'll see when uh when I go to put everything back on. But from there, um, you pretty much just. Uh, on the spindle here, just take a rag, wipe all this excess off. Um, you can take brake cleaner, clean that off real good. Um, really big thing what you want to look for and what a lot of problem um, I see with doing bearings and whatnot is, is on the inside here where your seal sits. You can kind of see you can kind of see where it where that sits, okay. Um, what you want to make sure you do is run your finger around that. You don't want to run your finger around it and push push down pretty hard. And what you want to make sure is that there's not too big of a groove in there. Otherwise, you won't get a good seal. And most importantly, make sure there is not any burrs on there. Any kind of if if it cuts your finger. It's gonna cut your seal and then all your grease is gonna leak right out the back. So take your finger and really run it around that where that seal is. And this one seems pretty good, so you know it's good. And then uh pretty much uh you know that's it for now, you know, and uh, uh take take the other side off and um and then you and then you bring them over to the bench.